Welcome back. You know, America is a great country with great people, massive diversity, where the vast majority of us get along, but there are forces in this country, political and others, that seek to divide us. This idea that America is systemically racist is a big lie. The purpose of the flag and the national anthem is to unite the country. The people who attack it don't seek to unite the country. Let's go through history very quickly in the minutes that I have left. We had a civil war that began in 1861. Over 800,000 casualties. That would be the equivalent today of over 8 million casualties. And over half of those were soldiers and others fighting for the North to keep the Union together and to end slavery. No nation on the face of the earth has ever undertaken such an effort. 1863, we have the Emancipation Proclamation. President Lincoln freeing the slaves uh, throughout the country, particularly the South. Uh, we had 1865, the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery. The states ratified the 13th Amendment. We had the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and 1871. The Enforcement Act of 1870. The Force Act of 1871, all intended to advance the cause of integration. We had the KKK Act and the Civil Rights Act of 1875. In 1868, the 14th Amendment was ratified by the states. It abolishes, uh, not only did it abolish slavery, it guarantees due process and equal protection to all citizens, especially freed African slaves. 1870, the 15th Amendment guarantees the right to vote for all citizens. Now, the implementation of this became problematic uh, because of the Democrat Party and racist elements, not just in the South and in the North, that didn't believe in Reconstruction after the assassination of Abraham Lincoln and after uh, Ulysses S. Grant left office. And so there have been many efforts since then, including by our courts, our national legislatures, and our state legislatures. You have in 1954 the Brown versus the Board of Education decision 9-0, to zero, uh, reversing parts of Plessy versus Ferguson, it ended legal racial segregation in schools. In 1962, Bailey versus Patterson ends desegregation in transportation. The 1964 Civil Rights Act passed by the overwhelming majority of Republicans in the House and the Senate and majorities of the Democrats in both. Prohibits discrimination in voting, public accommodations, public facilities, public education. Federally, federal assistance programs and employment and establish the EEOC. You had the 1965 Voting Rights Act that prohibited denial or restriction of the right to vote. It forbids discriminatory voting practices nationwide. 1967, you had the Loving versus Virginia Act declares state laws prohibiting interracial marriage to be unconstitutional. Going back, in 1953, Dwight Eisenhower instituted rules that eliminated discrimination in government contracting. He desegregated federal government and the nation's capital. 1957, the Civil Rights Act of 1957, it created the Civil Rights Commission, it created the Civil Rights Division of the Department of Justice. 1957 and 59, Eisenhower ordered desegregation of the Washington, D.C. public schools. You had the Insurrection Act that was amended in 1871 to allow the use of military to enforce, among other things, civil rights and desegregation. 1871, Ulysses S. Grant sent a thousand soldiers to hunt down Klansmen in South Carolina and they captured 600 of them. 1957, Eisenhower sent the 101st Airborne Division to Little Rock to protect nine black students entering Little Rock Central High School against the order of the governor at the time, Orville Faubus, one of uh, Bill Clinton's mentors, by the way. 1962, John Kennedy federalized the National Guard to allow a black student to enroll in classes at the University of Mississippi, Oxford. 1965, LBJ federalized the National Guard to protect civil rights marches uh, headed for Selma to Montgomery. This, I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg. The, the number of economic programs, the trillions of dollars and so, don't tell me this country is systemically racist. If this country were systemically racist, none of this would have taken place. None of this would be taking place. We Americans are good people, regardless of our race, regardless of our religion, regardless of our sex, regardless of the politi politicians who try to divide us, the media who try to divide us, these so-called cultural icons who try to divide us. We're an imperfect people in an imperfect country, but it is the greatest country on the face of the earth. Just ask most of those who are on TV, who are in sports, or in Hollywood, who trash it day in and day out. 
If you want real, revolutionary, dramatic reforms, including in our inner cities, then abandon the old economic practices. Allow choice, allow liberty to take place in these communities. They are ruled by one party, iron-fisted control. And the politicians that run these towns, as far as I'm concerned, are corrupt, right up to here. Anyway, thank you for joining me tonight on Life, Liberty, and Levin, and I'll see you next time.